is uh, Karen, uh, Dr. Karen Kutschlujos from Penn State, who will speak about Islamization of Algorithm Z and real, real applications. As usual, we're going to take uh, the speaker, in this case Han, uh, to the Evelyn restaurant and um, Eastern Avenue, 45 Eastern Avenue, uh, at 6.45 p.m. If you'd like to join us, you are very much invited, but please let me know right after the talk. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all for attending. It's an honor to be here. I thank Dr. Zeilberger and Andrew for the opportunity. First of all, this is joint work with my professor and colleague, Aizai. From Penn State. And we'll begin with some preliminaries. A partition of a positive integer It's a finite sequence of unordered positive integers. For instance, we can say b plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That's going to be a partition of 9. There are many different representations for partitions. There are Ferris graphs, surface symbols. Let's look at Young diagrams, which are a collection of boxes, really. A row of three boxes for the first part, another row of three boxes for the second part, another row of two boxes for the third part, and finally a single box for the last part. If we read columns instead of rows, then we will get another partition, possibly another partition for the same integer. That's called the conjugate. So the conjugate of that one is 4 plus 3 plus 2. We will talk about generating functions for partitions which require heavy use of pure factorials. So let's define them. When we say a sub n, that's a shorthand or a longer version. A is called a parameter, q is called the base. This is a finite product. 1 minus a times 1 minus aq times 1 minus aq squared and so on up to 1 minus a times q to n minus 1. You can also define a sub infinity which is the limit of these things. If you worry about convergence, you require q to be less than 1 in modulus, then everything converges absolutely. Oh, we do not worry about convergence. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> 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 <Okay>. <laughs> and there is a big if there, if you yeah. worry about convergence. <laughs> Real right. people but worry about convergence. <laughs> You can always look at things formally. Anyway. No, no, coffee that it me. Now, the generating functions, let's begin with the easier ones. 1 over q sub n. Let's expand this. 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared, up to 1 minus q to n. Thanks to geometric series, you can expand all factors in the denominator and collect the like terms, collect the like exponents of q, and you will have a series. Some say capital N greater than 0. C sub n, q to n, and these coefficients, q 
count the number of partitions of big N into parts that don't exceed small n. Using the idea of conjugation, that's also the number of partitions of big N into at most small case M parts. We can do fancier things. We can look at 1 over x times q sub n. That's going to give you another series. Yeah, let's say capital N greater than or equal to 0. Let's say d sub n q to n. This time, oh, wait. Terribly sorry. We will have a double series there. because we have one more parameter. Capital M and capital N greater than zero. These are M and N. X to M, Q to N. Now this coefficient, again, counts the number of partitions of big N into exactly M parts. the exponent of x counts the number of parts. We can do even fancier things, but our objective was just to define and show some usage of these two factorials. And it's good to remember that 1 over q sub infinity is going to give us the partition function. And greater than 0. Q of n, Q to n, and that's the partition function. Okay, now one of the most fundamental results in theory of partitions is the Q binomial theorem. different but equivalent formulations, we are going to use the following. Some j greater than or equal to 0 minus a sub j the quantity x times q raised to j all over q sub j. That's equal to an infinite product. A series equals an infinite product minus a times x times q sub infinity divided by x times q sub infinity. There are many different proofs. In fact, there are unnecessarily many proofs of this type. But we are going to talk about a bijective proof today. We will regard these series, it's easy to argue that we have a triple sum here, let's say over capital M, capital N, capital R, all greater than or equal to zero, some coefficient that depends on these indices times x to M, A to R, and Q to N. This coefficient counts the number of partitions of n into exactly n parts. 
so that the exponent of q is the number being partitioned. The exponent of x is the number of parts, number of total parts that are used. And the exponent of a are selected parts, selected distinct parts. You don't necessarily select one from each occurring part. Let's see an example here. Consider the partition. I'm not going to write pluses all around. 8, 6, 4, 2, 2, 1. This is a partition into six parts. And if you add these numbers, that's a partition of 23. And let's select three of the parts. Let's say 8, 6, and 2. So this is accounted for. by q to 23, x to 6, and we have selected three distinct parts. We don't necessarily select 1 or 4, a to 3. We will show that both the left hand side and the, the product in the middle generate these partitions. And that's going to be the bijective. This method is called algorithm Z, back in the 80s. Dr. Zyberg and Bresu came up with this. They were doing something much more general. They were working on Rogers Ramanujan identities, but the algorithm has different applications, and this is one of them. Let's see how the proof goes. with the series side and we will come up with this partition. We know that exponent of x counts the number of parts and x only appears in the numerator here so j equals 6 to start with. When j equals 6 x squared the, the quantity x squared to 6 will give us 6 watts. The Q sub J on the bottom will give us partitions into at most 6 parts. So let's see what we have there. So we feel like yeah, 3, 3, 2, 1 initial example. <clears throat> and the big deal is how to interpret this minus a sub 6 on top. When you expand this, that's going to give you 1 plus a, 1 plus a times q, 1 plus a times q squared, up to 1 plus a times q to 5. There are six places and there are six factors. You can select one of the parts. For instance, suppose that we select the second from the left, the fourth, and the fifth parts. That means we choose once for all remaining, from all remaining factors. So, well, let's not forget that in terms of exponents, one is q to zero, a to zero, x to zero, so no contribution from the parts that are not selected. But from those that are selected from the first part, we have a times q. That means plus one for the part and A to keep track of the number of chosen parts. 
one for the second position. Zero here, one, two, three, four, and five. Now, you selected the fourth and the fifth ones, the corresponding contributions are going to be three and four. And you add column ones. So we have one, we have two together with A. And keep in mind that X uh, accompanies all parts appearing, and Q, the exponent of Q is the sum of all these numbers. I'm not writing those. I'm going to have two here. We will have six here. That's eight. Again, one of the selected parts and four. If you rearrange, that's the partition you're going to get. So that's sort of uh, the forward phase of algorithm Z. The more interesting part is how to go back. Beginning with that partition, I mean, with the uh, not increasing version of this one, 8, 6, 4, 2, 2, 1, 2 is one of the selected parts, 6 and 8, we assume that all A's come from the first three positions. Use the smallest possible numbers. So we have 4, 2, 1, 8, 6, 2. Well, the decomposition in this case would be 4, 2, 1. Okay. The first position would have contribution 0, the second position 1, the third position 2, and the remaining numbers would be 6, 5, and 2. But the top row is not in desired order. So here I swap parts until you get an ordered list on top. For instance, 6 is in the wrong place. So let's swap it with 1. Would have four two okay six would now go in the fourth position that would be recorded as four and three because we would have to have contribution three in the fourth position that decrease wait where did I go wrong? Six plus two is eight. So that's hard to sort. And we can't do anything to one. That's one of the selected parts, five and two. That's still not in the correct position. We swap it once more. And we're gonna have four, four, and now the fifth position should have contribution four here, two, one, five, and two. Now this is in the correct place. One more swap is one too many, but in this case it was one too few. So there are unique places that you can put these numbers. That will tell you which positions are selected. So which terms you get from the um, from the finite product on top. You do the same thing for these selected parts. Five is not in its correct place. You have to swap with one. You have to do it once more. And at the end, you will get the decomposition we had there. Four, four, three, two, one, one. And 
and that's algorithm Z. That's what uh, 